Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am delighted to have you join us in, in our uh, session today on a topic that uh, that is something that I certainly can relate to and resonate with. Um, as I, we, I started out with a, a link to the Padlet and um, our host for today, Linnell, will uh, post the link uh, again so that you can go into it and, and uh, find a, a graphic or an image or something that has meaning for you to post in the Padlet. We're using Padlet um, for today's session because of the capabilities that it, that it has for us of being able to actually put the, uh, uh, images in there you'll see when you go in or to link to them or to link to a website it's a it's a, uh, a pretty versatile tool so our topic today has to do with visual literacy uh, or another way of putting it would be uh, storytelling in in a visual format This is a, a listing from um, Kathy Schrock's um, information, and she references uh, 13 literacies for the digital age. And we've talked about some of them in our, uh, in our sessions in here. There is a few in there that I certainly need to know a whole lot more about. And uh, we're going to be we'll be we'll be doing uh, uh, sessions on on many of them because our library staff is wonderful about uh, providing information about some of these. So we're we're looking forward to to all of those. Okay, um, so I am going to move us from here over to the Padlet. I've got the QR code on here again. If you want to uh, access it that way, you are still able to. Meanwhile, I will jump out of this and go into the Padlet. And um, there's our first post. Um, so a, a, a visual that has meaning for you. And, uh, oh, looky there, Mary created <laughs> a, a, a lovely item using, uh, using Adobe Spark, which is a, was made of a, a Valentine's card for, uh, for her, little, her little ones. <laughs> Adobe Spark. And that's a that's a great tool. It's probably something we need to uh, address at some point in the future. So um, we'll come back to this. If you have not had a chance to uh, to post something, and our first one is um, a picture or a link to a visual that has meaning for you. Obviously, we can see the meaning in uh, in Mary's, and we'll talk later about the meaning in mine, but as you can see from the visuals that are definitely on here, um, they any of them could be a part of a story, and that's that's what we're uh, that's what we're we're going to be working toward today. So let me uh, take us back to our uh, our presentation. So um, again, there's the QR code and. Uh, they have linked, uh, have provided the link to the Padlet in the chat room. So you can go in there and, and check, uh, check that out and add some things to it. I'd love to see additional videos or uh, images, things that are important. So what we're going to be doing today is consider the visuals and the idea of uh, visual storytelling. We're going to take a quick look at the pedagogical rationale because we do focus on that in everything we do. There's a, um, a meaning 
a, a meaning for it, a reasoning for the why we do what we do, and then think about how we can integrate those visuals into our content with intent, being intentional about it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so visual communication is, uh, there's some pretty amazing uh, data, facts about the visual communication. We process, our brain processes visuals much, much, much faster than it does text textual information. One of the items I found indicated 13 milliseconds is all it takes for us to process uh, the visuals, the images. And within the general population, 65% uh, are visual learners, 30% are auditory learners, and 5% are experiential learners. And I, I tend to think that the experiential learners uh, tend to be the younger ones uh, in, in the population. I've tested uh, that within the classes that I teach, which are pretty much uh, this semester anyway, younger, the younger part of our university population. But I've all, we also did some tests on it when I was teaching in the elementary school. And uh, they are, are a large, larger number of experiential learners. So obviously, it's something that changes as we, as we uh, grow up a little bit. So 13 milliseconds, another number that I have found <laughs> totally incredible. We process visuals 60,000 times faster than we do text. And if that's the case, then why do we wind up putting so much text in front of, uh, in front of our, uh, our audience, our participants? So I thought that was a pretty, pretty interesting uh, concept. This is an image that, uh, that, of course, it's beautiful. It's an Ansel Adams uh, photograph, and almost everything that that he created is is spectacular in this same way. Uh, image of Mount Williamson, and and we can enjoy and love that image which we do, but the rest of the story is that it's the image that, um, that the Japanese saw from their internment camp. And, and so that puts a whole, whole different uh, perspective on what that, image, what that image represents and what it means. So what I am going to do now is um, invite you to go back to Padlet and go into the second column. So uh, a, a, a visual element that you have recently seen or used. So uh, post it or link it in the Padlet. And I will leave, um, Linnell has posted the link for us. And I will leave this on for just a moment, and then we will go in and check it out. So I want to give you a chance to think about a recent visual element that you have seen or used. And even if you can't access the actual element, you can jot down what it was and why it comes to your mind, because obviously it made an impact on you, right? All right, so let's go see if we have, if we have, uh, have some additional posts in here. So we've uh, we we have looked at the first two on there. Um, ah, so this was uh, the image that Mary sent to her children for Valentine's Day. The one that I have, and while this image is pretty small to uh, to actually get the impact of the image, but I invite you to go into it and take a look at it. It, it ha it's a, makes a very powerful message. This is an, the image from space of, of the lights at night. 
and uh, and when you think about what areas are bright and which areas are dark it's it's pretty uh, makes a very powerful statement so when we're talking about images i have to throw in the uh the copyright concerns this particular image came from uh from nasa and nasa's images are all uh, available for anyone to use with attribution i happened to get this one from the uh, website called Photos for Class. And the really cool thing about getting images from there is that they uh, come with the attribution. Now you can't tell uh, in this tiny little version of it, but all of the images that come from stories for uh, photos for class come with the attribution at the bottom of the uh, at the bottom of the image, and that's just a very very helpful way to make sure that we are keeping ourselves copyright compliant. The other websites, uh, Unsplash, are definitely is is definitely one that you can uh, that all the images there are free to use, and and, and uh, there is lots in there. Um, and you can also get the attribution to put with it, even though they are free to use. It is our uh, our recommendation that we always attribute them. Um, Mary used Adobe Spark, and the images when you check for images in Adobe Spark, they are also images that are Creative Commons uh, from a number of different sources. I used one. Uh, last week with the, in doing something with her, my class that came from Unsplash. Some of them come from Pixabay, but all of the images that they provide when you click, when you search for images in uh, Adobe Spark are uh, Creative Commons and available. And so I will come back to the, uh, come back to the last question in a bit. So again, here's the uh, here's here's the link both in the chat, on the screen, and as a uh, QR code so that you can just do it on your phone without having to leave your your browser, leave where you are. Um, what I'd like to share with you now is is a uh, an infographic called the power of visual communication. And that is a link. And when I send you the, uh, the PowerPoint, you will have access to the link. I also have it open in my uh, web browser. So I'll just go in that way to it. Uh, this is from, from a website called Wise Owl, which I thought was kind of interesting. But clearly, it's something designed to, uh, for, for business people. But it's called the power of visual communication. And it gives us a little bit of background information uh, and some, some rationale, again, the pedagogical foundation for, for using visual. So what is visual communication? Uh, it describes how we share information and ideas in a way that can be uh, looked at, viewed. And they give us a, a, a Quite a few examples, uh, objects. I could um, pick up my pen and hold it, and that would be a visual of it. Um, we can do. We can use models, which of course you see often in in uh, in classrooms in all ages and levels. Could be graphs, and we we certainly see a lot of those. <coughs> could well be maps, and and the the form. The, form, the various forms that maps come in, so they are definitely a visual communication as well as a guide. Tables, ways of displaying information, photographs and videos, which we all love to use and love to share, and any drawings or diagrams. So there's those are some examples. There's a, a, a lot available. So how effective is visual communication? Well, we've heard... Uh, all along a picture is worth a thousand words and uh, i'm wondering if maybe we should say maybe sixty thousand words if we if we process those images sixty thousand times faster it certainly would be more than a thousand words this is a quote uh, about understanding the world 
much, much better through images, by learning how to read images. So the idea of visual literacy is truly an important piece of, 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 of why we do what we do. And uh, this is one of the things that we have seen and heard for a while. And I don't know the statistics on when this information or if it is still currently accurate, but studies show that people remember 10% of what we hear, 20% of what we read. Now think about that one for a moment. We remember 20% of what we read and 80% of what we see and do. And uh, I think I can vouch for that one myself. 93% um, of all communication is nonverbal, nonverbal. So we start right from the beginning, developing those skills for reading the visual, getting the getting information through nonverbal nonverbal uh, messages and cues. And uh, this is that uh, the 60,000 number again, visuals are processed 60,000 times faster than text. And uh, where we're thinking about the visuals that we see in advertising, 195 billion spent in US alone in 2016 on advertising. And of course, advertising is based on visuals and the, the the more clever those visuals are the more that advertisement um, is the more compelling it becomes so visuals go way back way back 10,000 to 40,000 years ago uh, engravings sculptures uh, body ornamentation and the cave paintings so um, so it goes goes all the way back uh, 10,000 BC to modern times petroglyphs uh, images that that were carved into rock and those are fascinating to see clearly have stayed around for a while and inform, and, and an important uh, form of, of symbols that were used to convey messages pretty clearly in most cases don't you think so this uh, infographic also references the development of visual styles, ideograms, uh, the symbols, the things that we see and clearly recognize, uh, no matter, it, it's, a, it's a language that is uh, kind of encompasses, for the most part, encompasses multiple languages. So you don't have to have a specific um, foundation, a linguistic foundation to be able to understand them. Ideograms, logograms, these are some of these are terms that I was not familiar with, but the logogram is the is is the um, where a single image represents a word. Whereas in our language we put the letters together to represent a word in Chinese, Japanese, and Korean, it's the combination of those diagrams that represents a word. And I find it both fascinating and beautiful. I've had the opportunity to uh, to work with uh, a young lady from China and, and, and learn the beauty of that particular, particular form of writing. Uh, our alphabet started around 2000 years BC and uh, the Greeks and Romans started the basis for what we use as our uppercase alphabet now and then moving from there into books manuscripts which the original ones or early ones were uh, written on papyrus uh, and then the printing press from 1501 in Europe uh, one of the uh, the the local things that that I had heard from a, an environmentalist quite a number of years ago was that uh, sea grape leaves were used by the natives in this area to leave messages because they're a fairly thick leaf and easy to to uh, put a marking on to leave a message for someone coming along so it's kind of an interesting perspective on it this one <coughs> excuse me talks about the fonts and how fonts are laid out and how they were 
uh, how they are transformed. Of course, now we can uh, get, there's an un, I'm, I have no idea even how many, but an unlimited probably number of types of fonts that we can have. But it's important for how we read and how we view and the type of document that we create. So those styles uh, put the style of the font leaves an impression of what it's uh, of, of what's could be contained in that in the uh, document. Um, and then, of course, we use a great deal of statistical visualization in the graphs and charts and, and uh, plots that that we use. So, in this case, the functionality and the uh, the the format of the, the the graphs and the visuals are linked together to to put the image out. And then, graphic design uh, as early as 79 A.D. And then computer graphics were, for, were first introduced in 1960. And then video developed in 1951 and uh, digital photography in 1981. So that's some pretty interesting uh, background information about the use of, uh, of infographics, an infographic about the use of visuals uh, in our, in our so take us back into there we are. So that's the link to that item in uh, in this one. So let's talk for just a moment about uh, elements of visual representation, visual presentations. So if we're thinking about a presentation that we're creating, there's a number of different components that are a part of it. And even though we typically are thinking of ourselves in terms of a teaching presentation, we are still getting a story out there. We are telling, telling a story that we want uh, our audience, in most cases our students, to take away. But being able to combine the story with the image in order to, to do a better job of getting that message across uh, is 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 part of what makes the storytelling process uh, the fast a fascinating one. So we combine the story itself, the images uh, with text, preferably not much text, as little as possible, just enough to get the message across. But being able to show the connections within what we're what we are doing now, this particular image. Uh, probably drops down to the one for humor. It happened to be some uh, some hot air balloons that my perception of it looked like the the two were trying to have a conversation. So there would be humor in that one, but your images are almost always going to evoke emotions. And so think about what emotions it is you want to uh, you want to bring out for your uh, for your audience, and how you want how those things are going to connect to the story that you want told. So thinking about uh, where we're thinking about the emotions and how those impact the senses. So where is it you want to take your audience? What's the, what's the storyline? Where is it you want them to be by the time you finish that? So using all of our senses to get us there. Anybody uh, want to make any, uh, any comments or anything on what we've said so far or done? So I think I'm going to take us... Um, back to Padlet. And uh, I would like for you to now give some thought to a story that you could create. It may be something with an image that you have seen, image that you have used, something that you have found. So think about, uh, about your story and jump back into Padlet. Again, there's the QR code as well as the uh, as the link on the screen 
and let's uh, let's think about how we can connect a story with an image. Uh, I know Mary has started on one. I have a little bit of one in there, but I would love to see what you have to share. So I'll leave this link up for a moment. It would be interesting to see, even if you wanted to uh, maybe make a connection, a story connection with this particular image to see what that, uh, where where you might take that image and how you could incorporate that image into a story if you haven't uh, linked one up for yourself. I'd love to hear from others. And if you don't want to post in Padlet, you're absolutely welcome to put something into the chat. Uh, if you do so, please, uh, on the down arrow, click where it says to all participants so that everyone can see what you've posted. I'll take us into the Padlet and uh, maybe let uh, whoever has posted share theirs. All right, Mary. Um, Lino, we, I think we can open Mary's mic. I'd love to tell you, I'd love for you to tell us about your image. Okay, so while we're waiting for Mary, I will jump into my comment. Um, mine has to do with this, this image. And uh, in this case, the little girl was having fun pretending to drive her older sister's car. And uh, and so this was and this was a few years ago, uh, and she grew up to be one who was willing to take the take the steering wheel of her own life and uh, step out for what she was for what was she considered to be important. So I'm going to invite uh, any of you to post. All you have to do is click on the uh, the plus sign and post a comment either about one of these images or about one that you have seen or one that resonates with you that could be a part of a story that you would tell. I'd love to hear from some of the rest of you. And uh, I believe that, that we have the link posted in the chat. You're welcome to join in. And uh, I can take us back to uh, the page so that you can see the link and uh, see the QR code if you want to do it that way. So Mary's mic is not working right now. So um, so there's the QR code and uh, Linnell has posted the link for us. So we'll take us back in for just a, a brief moment. Meanwhile, I will just share what Mary has said uh, in her, her comment. Um, this is part of Mary's own personal history, and it's a um, mountain that is in her hometown, and it's absolutely beautiful. I'm going to assume that, Mary, you've done some exploring in that mountain, and, uh, and it is. It is extremely beautiful, and I'm sure that growing up <clears throat> with something like that as a presence in your area would would certainly make it a, a, a key part of of how you identify with things at home. So anybody else want to jump in or comment in the chat? We'd love to have you join us either in the uh, Padlet or in the chat. Made it easier to find your way. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay, so Mary, my my cue here from being in Florida is, um, I know that the ocean is always on the east. If that helps, <laughs> rely on the GPS in your phone. Yeah, that works too, and I suspect that's what more of us do these days. But uh, but we always, you know, I I think we 
probably all tend to use some sort of a frame of reference here. I, as I say, I tend to think of the, uh, in relation to where the ocean is, knowing that that's generally east from where I am. However, when I visit my friend in Naples, I have to reframe and I have to stop and think before I think about directions. It's interesting how we do that. No, you can't always see the ocean. I just always have a a mm, mental uh, perception of where it is in relation to where I am. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to I'm going to mention is something else that I discovered in one of my readings is is thinking about your star moment. So as you're wrapping up your presentation, thinking about uh, star being as something they'll always remember. So I would not ever see that picture of that mountain without thinking about Mary and it being a part of her of her uh, persona, who she was. Um, so so thinking about your images creating that star moment, something to remember, something to take away from the from the session. And I'm going to invite uh, others to think about what could be a star moment for you. And you can wrap something up with a with a memorable memorable event in the picture. This is a quote from, um, I've, I've had the opportunity to work with uh, Linnell Burmark on a couple of occasions and her, uh, and to be influenced by her, her visual literacy uh, elements. And because so much is shaped by imagery, it has, it is something that we really have to keep into consideration, keep in mind in everything that we do. Mm, yes, Mary says, makes our narrative much more powerful because it appeals to all of the senses that uh, and it makes that emotional connection. Um, this image has an emotional connection for me to a, a trip I took and, and, uh, and, and being in that place at that certain time and I Look at that image, and I, it just takes me back there. Uh, just, and similar to the way Mary's mountain picture does as well. I have another image. Oops. Need to do that. There we go. Um, to share. And this is some uh, um, a little. Uh, some educational illustrations that I had the opportunity to purchase a few years ago, and I love them because they're all so, so varied to the point. If we're not modeling what we're teaching, we're teaching something else. <laughs> so I just felt like that was kind of an interesting, interesting perspective on it because if we're sharing images with our students, we are, first of all, reaching them in a very quick and, and impactful way, but we're also modeling for them the importance of these, uh, of this type of image with their, uh, with their own presentations. So what I'm going to invite you to do right now, and this is not a Padlet post, but I'm going to ask you to post in the chat room uh, a takeaway, something that has resonated with you in this or something that perhaps you want to take a deeper dive into. So I'd like to, I'd like to know what your takeaway is. Are you going to make a change in something that you're doing? Maybe a, a presentation that you're going to be making in the next uh, short while. <laughs> uh, so take just a moment, please, to jot in the chat and um, I will share that, share it out or you can raise your hand and, and uh, Linnell will open your mic and let you speak. 
um, I will share it or Linnell will read comments in there. So I'd like for you to think about your own takeaway. What has made a difference for you? Maybe it would help if I ask you to just make yourself a, a visual note in front of you and then maybe share. Take some time to, to, to reflect on it, to think about it. So while you are thinking about that, I'm going to share a couple of other things. This is uh, I have two pages of the references that I've used because this is a this is a um, an area that that has interested me, and I'm always looking for new information about it. So uh, reference list. There's two of them by Linnell Burmark, and uh, the first one on visual literacy was kind of what I got started on um and then the other one um uh, is is her one of her references about uh making presentations if they snooze you lose <laughs> it's good it's, uh, it's cute it's well done but then i also have uh some other reference list and this is having to do with our um the well um Medina's book on one on the brain because in my mind uh, this is all connected. I'm I'm very much interested in neuroscience and the research on the brain and how the brain learns, and so that's a that's an important a key piece for me. And uh, Kathy Schrock is also has a has a wonderful uh, website listing of a lot of information about a lot of different resources. And then this is the uh, the infographic that I shared with you. And so um, one more opportunity to to post in the chat what your takeaway is. And meanwhile, I am going to let you know so you can start getting excited about it is our topic next week has to do with some of the cool tools that are available to us. Kathy has been gathering a, a, a lovely collection of cool tools and i'm always interested in seeing what pops up on her computer when she's when she's working on this so she's going to be doing our presentation uh next monday about cool tools so i thank you for joining us today and uh and invite you to uh, to share you can still go back into the padlet and puts your comments or your your uh, information in there and you're of course welcome to reach out to us at any time thank you so much for joining us today mm -hmm.